welcome to the SVG TV News for Thursday, July 9th. I am Khalil Cato with the details. A temporary ban on amplified music, which has been in place for the last three months due to the COVID-19 pandemic, will be lifted tomorrow. As such, the police will once again issue permission for amplified music to be played in private and public spaces. However, there are some guidelines which must be followed. Mass gatherings with amplified music will be done in phases. The first phase will end this month end, and the second phase will start in August. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, who detailed the guidelines or protocols on radio yesterday, said the RSVG police force will have to do its part to ensure that they are enforced. At a news conference, Commissioner of Police Colin John said that there will be certain conditions under which permission will be granted for amplified music to be played, which include inspection of the venue, However, he said there will be flexibility in the recommended number of persons allowed at events. For outdoor events, it would be 300 persons. For indoor events, um, it's recommended that 200 persons. That's the recommendation. I say. It's not written in stone, and as I said before, we are human beings, we're not robots. It's not as if you tick the box and say, well, okay, 200 persons, so no more. So within reasonable limits, we would really police it in that oh, regard. Okay, it, would, it depends on the event. Yeah. It depends on the venue as well. Yeah. So whenever the application is made, we would assess the situation. We would visit the venue. And based on the particular situation, advice would be given in that regard. So it's not, well, a one-size-fits-all type event. Commissioner John said that the protocols for the managed conduct of mass gatherings with amplified music is a collaborative effort between the RSVG police force and the Health Services Subcommittee core team. He warned that persons can be prosecuted for noise nuisance with or without permission if they are found to be in breach of the protocols. Okay, just as before when we grant permission to play amplified music and they breach the condition, we is um, closed on the the party or the um, event. Any uh, fines? Mm. Well, it depends. If um, they persist, then under the Noise Act, they can be um, taken to court and the necessary punishment or necessary sentence given. The new protocols will be attached to the permission letter, which will serve as a reminder to event promoters of what needs to be done to help to reduce the risk of patrons contracting COVID-19. Public Relations Officer, Police Public Relations Officer ASP Junior Simmons said it is necessary that all persons comply with the new protocols. To play that back as well, uh, because as Commissioner said earlier, the Commissioner of Local Cannabis Police is. Right. We need everybody to be on board. So if you are a responsible promoter or business businessman or woman, and you're having an event and there are protocols to be followed, you should ensure that they're followed. In Phase 2, which starts in August, the maximum number of persons recommended in public spaces will be 500. Other measures will include the use of face coverings, sufficient sanitizing stations, sufficient space to allow 3 to 6 feet, adequate toilet facilities, and temperature checks to be done. The Sexual Offences Unit of the RSVG Police Force has registered an increase in sexual offences against children during this period of COVID-19. So says Constable Crystal Walker on the fourth day of the virtual crime prevention exhibition. Constable Walker said during this, the long period of the closure of schools, parents left their children unsupervised, which at times, which at some, that should be, at which time some of them were taken advantage of. She encouraged parents to be more responsible and to educate their children on what sexual assault means. Well, I would advise parents to educate their children let the children know that it's inappropriate for persons to be touching them on their breasts, on their private parts. Parents are to monitor the children, especially on their tablets, their phones. Also, they should spend time with their children. So do you have um, matters of crimes online, sexual offenses happening online with those children? Well, I would say... It varies because um, when parents leave their children unsupervised, 
they tend to go on sites and look at certain things that they're not supposed to look at. Head of the Sexual Offenses Unit, Station Sergeant Desiree Days, said that her team has been doing more to educate children, parents, and the general public about sexual offenses and how they can be prevented, noting that they have been using virtual platforms to bring further awareness to the issue during this period of COVID-19. Well, I would like to say to the male population of St. Vincent and the Grenadines that our children are to be protected. No woman deserves to be sexually assaulted. A sexual assault is a violation of a person's most intimate and personal being. These reports and these actions leave scars on victims that last a lifetime. I would also like to appeal to the men who claim that the girls who are 50, 14 and 13 years old solicited them. The girls may be saying yes, but according to the laws of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, a girl under the age of 15 years cannot consent to sexual intercourse. So even if the girl said yes, the law says no. Since the Sexual Offenses Unit was established on November 6, 2018, Station Sergeant Days said over 300 cases of sexual offenses have been under investigation, with 80% of these cases leading to an arrest and two convictions. We would have been involved in the investigations of over 300 cases of sexual assaults, various offenses. We have had more than 80% of arrests has been made in these cases. We have had two convictions before the court, and these convictions were for two summary matters. You see, Sergeant Morgan, most of our cases are indictable matters. And what would happen is that there is a PI before the family court, which is a private closed court, and then these matters will be sent on to the high court. So we have a number of matters which are pending in the high court, and we are waiting for dates for those trials. I'd love to see when victims come in that justice is swift, but we have no control over it. Our job is to do the investigation, to present the evidence to the court. Once the matter goes into the court system, it is completely out of our hands. We wait on the court for trial dates. There has been only one case of human trafficking in SVG since 2015, and representative of the Anti-Trafficking in Humans Unit of the RSVG Police Force, Corporal Garrett Dublin, said the unit is doing everything to prevent any such reoccurrence in the country. He was at the time speaking at the Virtual Crime Prevention Exhibition on what the unit has been doing to prevent human trafficking in SVG. In St. Vincent, we had one case of human trafficking. Uh, we had a local businessman in 2015 being arrested. The matter was taken before court, and at the PI state, it was withdrawn. As a result of this, they cannot just walk into a station or just approach somebody and say that, I am a victim of human trafficking. Hence why we know at the Trafficking in Persons Unit, we are the ones who have to go and investigate possible cases and look for these victims so that we could rescue these victims. Corporal Dublin noted that the Anti-Trafficking Unit was formed on March 7, 2012 to tackle any form of human trafficking, which he describes as the recruitment, transportation, and transformation of an individual for the purpose of exploitation, whether it is sexually or through forced labor. He also highlighted ways in which human trafficking can take place through adoption. What is happening is that persons will go into countries, um, areas where there is poverty where there are persons who have a lot of children and they cannot afford to take care of the children. So what they do is they, they tell them like this, I could find a loving home for your son, your daughter. They can get a good education, they can get a good job, and in return they could take care of you. But what happens after adoption? That parent or guardian might sign over the rights to the child. That child would be taken away, and they're forced into prostitution, they're forced into domestic servitude, they're forced into street begging, or sometimes they're even killed and their organs harvest. Police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the death of Grenadian national Dwayne Seaton, who is believed to be in his early 40s. His lifeless body was discovered with what appeared to be bullet wounds in the Belen, the Belen Mountains yesterday. 
A post-mortem examination is expected to be carried out on the body of the deceased to ascertain the cause of death. Persons with any information that can aid with the investigation and the apprehension of the offenders or offender are asked to contact the Assistant Commissioner of Police in Charge of Crimes at 456-1339, the Officer in Charge of the Eastern Division at 458-7560, or the OIA Police Station at 457-6605, or any police officer that you're comfortable with. All information will be treated confidentially. Two individuals are said to be in police custody and assisting with the investigation. Leader of the ruling Unity Labour Party and Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez says that the party is in the final stages of selecting candidates for the upcoming general elections. Speaking on radio yesterday, Dr. Gonzalez said almost all candidates have been confirmed with the exception of one in the Grenadines. We have, we have all our candidates lined up to run on mainland St. Vincent. Every, in every constituency, we know who we have. We know who we have in the Southern Grenadines, and we, we are in the process of finalizing the choice between two persons in the Northern, in the northern Grenadines. And um, I'm ready to rumble, you know. I'm ready, I ready to rumble. You know? PM Gonzalez said that his party is ready to assume a fifth term in office, noting that the NDP's candidates will be no match for the ULP. He made particular mention of public servant Philip Jackson, who recently announced his intention to run on the NDP's ticket in Mariaqua. I, I was very I thought that Philip I thought that Philip um, Jackson, the public servant. By the way, not that not, not that could have happened under Sir James in a public servant's announcing that he's going to be that he's a candidate or that um before you resign or anything like that so to me I, that that doesn't faze me but i call jimmy because the news that i got is that you're selected i said jimmy your prayers have been answered philip jackson is the candidate <laughs> i was disappointed when i wake up when i when i wake up monday morning i hear he had only offered himself i was so I was profoundly disappointed. I hope he's a candidate. Responding to comments made on radio this week by former Prime Minister and founder of the NDP, Sir James Mitchell, on the party's readiness for the general election, the Yolpi leader said Sir James is misinformed. But I am telling you, the, the, the ULP is going to do better than the last time, both in percentage of votes and in seats. When that happens... The NDP, I don't know where they're going to go. I respect Sir James, and I wouldn't be unduly critical of him, but when he comes into the arena, and I know, I know a number of them will get, a number of them will get um, nastier, nastier. But you can bring anything you want. My record is there, and the vision of the, the, the Unity Labour Party is there. A Guyanese airline, Trans Guyana, has accepted the offer to repatriate stranded Guyanese in three islands, including St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This was noted by Honorary Council of Guyana to SVG Nigel Russell in an interview with SVG TV News Day. Now, have incentions who are stranded in Guyana. We have Guyanese who are stranded in St. Vincent. We've got Guyanese who are stranded in Grenada. We've got Guyanese who are stranded in St. Lucia. So we are trying now to do the originating charter out of Guyana to bring those persons back to St. Vincent, pick up who you have in St. Vincent, pick up some folks in Grenada, pick up some other Guyanese in St. Lucia, and then take them back to Guyana. It's called Trans-Guyana Airways. It may have come here a few times before, I'm told. It's a, a Beechcraft 1900D, it can take 19 persons. That's the aircraft that we're working on to get our people back home. We hope within another week to tie up all of those arrangements and all the permission they have to be granted. That's what we're trying to work on right now. Russell made it clear that the Guyanese government is not paying for the charter, but is playing a role in the facilitating of the re-entry of the stranded Guyanese as the borders remain closed. 
He said that the government is also looking at a priority list of travelers who can also be included on the repatriated flights. That's the very first priority, to get those persons in the diaspora who were out three to four months back home. The next one, in terms of essential travel, are government officials here. Obviously, government officials, after they've ceased doing maybe their virtual meetings and whatever, if there are government who, officials who need to travel to Guyana, that is on a priority list also. And then there are Guyanese who are living in St. Vincent, who need to go down to Guyana for whatever business or whatever emergency, they're on another category to travel. Then you'll have Vincentians themselves, who are not government officials, but still need to go down to Guyana for whatever nature of their business might be, maybe a funeral or something, they're on another category list. So Guyana is right now there, making that now there, formulated, so within the, by the, now at the end of this week, we can give you far better information. But the Guyanese official said he has requested the government to look into the matter of reimbursement of tickets purchased from Liat, which is now facing liquidation. Ask the Guyana government, look, there are people who are stranded here. They were hoping to go back with Liat. They cannot go back with Liat. That's number one. Number two, they cannot afford to buy a fresh ticket. What we've done is to ask people, those who have tickets, that they came with here through Liat, contact our office as soon as possible. Those are those who came in there and are stranded to be repatriated. Number two, they're Guyanese who had booked on Liat to go back to Guyana for a holiday. I've met quite a few of them, so they're stuck. So they're different category. One, those who came here on a holiday or business and are stranded here, and those who are resident here, who are going back to Guyana on a holiday in between August and whatever, you know many people book their tickets long before so they can get a good rate. We will ask them, please contact my office.